the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. It's great to be here on this very happy evening when we celebrate the arrival of a new priest, uh, Father Sam, to come and join the glittering team here serving uh, the people of uh, Holy Trinity and St. Leonard's uh, here in Horsham. Uh, we look forward very much to having you with us. Uh, we are in the Diocese of Chichester, like to think that we are driving down the average age of the clergy. Here is the evidence uh, of uh, that, uh, that happening. Uh, and uh, it's also very good to welcome those of you who come to visit uh, in support. Some of you returning to the Diocese of Chichester. I see the heavyweights of the Ecclesiastical Law uh, Society here this evening. Uh, and uh, it's very great to know that you're here with no fees to be charged, which is always the thing you worry about with lawyers. So let us give thanks that God has called us together to open up a new phase of witness to Jesus Christ in the communities that are served by the church in this place. you the Reverend Samuel McGuinness to be admitted as team vicar within this parish. Thank you for your presentation. My brothers and sisters, we are all anointed by the Spirit of God with many gifts and talents to enable us to live out our apostolic life as we seek to know and love and follow Jesus. I now call upon you as you receive a new priest and pastor to live out what you proclaim. Will you endeavour to maintain a life of daily prayer, regular Bible reading and worship, by which you will grow in faith and hope and love? Will you honour the gifts God has given you? And will you reflect with prayer, prayer, penitence and thanksgiving on what it means to be a follower of Christ in all your relationships? With the help and grace of God, we will. Will you live your life in a way that will bring others to know Jesus Christ? And will you humbly and joyfully share your faith with them? 
with the power and grace of God, we will. We will pray for one another as companions and travellers on a road together, recognising the presence and activity of God in each other. With the power and grace of God, we will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places and share with others the peace of God which passes all understanding. With the help and grace of God, we will. May God, who is faithful, strengthen you in wisdom and love that you may fulfill the obligations you have undertaken to his glory in the growth of the Church on earth. Amen. Let us now pray for Sam and for this parish in which he will serve. God our Father, Lord of all the world, we thank you that through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal Church. Hear our prayer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry each may be an instrument of your love, and give to your servant Sam, and to all who minister in this place, the needful gifts of grace, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from Ephesians, chapter 2, 
starting to read at verse 19. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. I have made known to you everything I have learnt from my Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. I am giving you these commandments, Jesus said, so that you may love one another. If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. If you belonged to the world, the world would love you as its own. Because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. Servants are not greater than their master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me 
hates my father also. If I, if I had not done among them the works that no one else did, if I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not have seen. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. It was to fulfill the word that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Would you sit down, please? I want to reflect on what it's like to testify. What does testify look and sound like? What do uh, we think we're doing when we testify? How do we know that we're doing it? And what effect might it have? The way that Holy Spirit testifies and the way we similarly are called to testify to Jesus Christ, <coughs> to our faith, our hopes, our identity, and the reality of God, who is the foundation of all that is. And an image of testifying uh, and its transformative uh, uh, capacity that I want to reflect on is the whole business uh, of uh, drama as an, an action that speaks about something more than just the story it's telling. And with drama, music. And with music, dance. The whole bit. Everything. And it comes, the particular image I'm thinking of comes from the experience of working many years ago now uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the city of Plymouth, uh, in an area of acute deprivation, uh, at a time uh, when uh, government funding for the probation service was still generous and imaginative. And when the probation service, working alongside voluntary organisations, uh, was looking at ways not simply to uh, engage with people who had uh, committed crimes and served sentences in prison, uh, but also to look at prevention, to look at how there might be a better way of being together, which gave people hope and a chance in life that avoided the damage of conviction and prison. And the particular form of testimony to this that was amazing and wonderful was run by a larger-than-life character called Barry, who was, believe it or not, a probation officer. He was everybody's idea of the pantomime day, the original Widow Twanky. He was incredible. And he ran, he ran one of the most amazing song and dance troops I've ever seen, made up of either those who had done some time uh, in prison, especially young people, young offender centres, and uh, made up of those who were at risk of offending. They were a rough lot, male and female. And Barry gathered together this troop. It was one of the things that, if you were lucky, you got a chance to participate in. And he drilled them hard. Rehearsals, uh, regularly. You couldn't be late. You couldn't not learn, learn your lines, and you couldn't muck about. And he trained them to sing, he trained them to dance, he trained them to act. And once a year, they gave an amazing performance. And all kinds of people came to it, including, of course, 
their mates and friends. And the transformative uh, impact of this. Bearing testimony, testifying to the capacity of every human being to achieve something good. The transforming effect was that moment when the show was over and the applause began. When perhaps for the first time in the lives of many of these performers, they were applauded loudly. They were recognized for having done something amazing, wonderful. And the transformation of self-esteem just from being applauded for having done something amazing together was remarkable. Some of the best investment in go of government money one could hope for. And I offer that not simply as a reflection on perhaps how far we've travelled since those days in terms of our approach to uh, the needs of people in all kinds of conditions and situations in our society today, but more particularly because I want to reflect on how we as Christians testify. And one of the things, one of the strands in our inheritance, one of part of the evidence of the work of the testifying of the Holy Spirit is precisely the gift of music song, the ability to sing together, and its transformative effect. It is there in the book of Proverbs at the moment of creation, as God creates, draws, circles out of nothing, makes what was not into something. So the angelic throng, rejoicing and delighting the powers of God's presence, sing with joy at this new thing that God is doing. And that theme of the music that accompanies the very act of creation runs deep into the experience of God for all who have searched and known God. It runs throughout the pages of the Old Testament. It finds perhaps its greatest expression in those songs, the hymn book of the Old Testament, which are the book of the Psalms, which speak again and again about singing a new song to the Lord. Praise that arises from the very depths of our hearts. This is visceral stuff. Sing a new song to the Lord. His praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Zion's sons exult in their king. For the Lord has done great things for us. And this sense of singing a new song is not about the sort of top-of-the-pops type need for novelty or fashion. But it is about the deep entering into the experience of life that goes through a variety of contexts and experiences. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. And what will today be like? For some it will be a day of rejoicing and gladness. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to God's house. For some it will be a day of pain and sadness, darkness and despair. Wherefore art thou absent from us, O God, so long? 
why is thy wrath so hot against the sheep of thy pasture? And the newness of the song that we sing is the statement that every day when we arise from sleep, we meet that gift of God to us, which is the day when we are called to know his love, <coughs> his presence, his purpose for each of us. And when this recognition elicits from our hearts some kind of song, and this song is a song which will connect us with the echo of a sound that in its fullness we have not yet fully heard. Part of the conviction of our life as Christians is that in this world we are, as it were, exiled. We are resident aliens. We are people whose vision, whose instincts belong to heaven already, but who are still exiled in time and space. But the exile is not complete, for the sound of heaven, that musical sound which connects us with the reality of God is something which fills our hearts with joy and hope. It's a sound with which the scriptures end. The sound of triumph over adversity. The sound of delight with those who shed their blood for Christ. The martyrs whose blood was the seed of the church, the handing on of the hope of faith in which death is vanquished and life is restored. And this sense that we are called to be a people with a song in our hearts, on our lips, a song of heaven, is also summed up in the Psalms, those exiles from their homeland who heard the people in their land of exile say to them, sing us one of the Lord's songs. Oh, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange place? Sam you are called to be a leader in this, in this experience, this testifying to a song that is sort of heard and felt, and a song which isn't simply one of trite or superficial happiness, but a song which you help others to learn to sing in the joys and sorrows, the griefs and disappointments, the hopes and the expectations of their life. In being alongside the people you serve, as one who elicits from them, by your human sympathy and faith, that which is in their heart and longs for release. And release, of course, is not simply the subjective sense of being able to sing a jingle, but it is the sense of becoming part of what we might call the troop of pilgrims. Those who in the dignity of divine worship, of singing before that which represents to us the throne of the Lamb, the altar where earth and heaven are joined in one place of intersection. Being together as a people who sing with one heart, 
and one mind and one voice the praises of the God who has made and redeemed us. Eliciting that hope, nurturing that joy, building that sense of confidence in God's love for us, uniquely and individually, corporately and across all time. Here is your task. Here is that joyful task which Barry undertook so magnificently in Plymouth. And for us, it is not the applause that we seek, but it is the vision of God face to face. It is the fulfilment of all our longings. It is discovering that we have long since been and now recognize the extent to which we are. No longer strangers or aliens, but citizens of heaven. An experience that we rehearse here on earth. And our sacred songs are the hallmark, the pledge, the seal of authentication that we have been where time and eternity intersect and change by that experience. May God give you strength, imagination and courage in eliciting this from the people you serve. Amen. The Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic Church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the Ordering of Bishops, Priests, and Deacons. Sam, in the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Samuel Robert Henry McGuinness, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, 
and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorized or allowed by canon. I, Samuel Robert Henry McGuinness, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty, King Charles III, his heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Samuel Robert Henry McGuinness, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Chichester and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. Martin, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Chichester, to our beloved in Christ, Samuel Robert Henry McGuinness, Clark, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We do hereby grant you license and authority to serve as a vicar in the team ministry established for the benefits of Horsham within our diocese and jurisdiction, and we invest you with all the rights and duties belonging to that office and commit to you a share in the cure of souls of the parishioners under the leadership of the rector of the said team ministry, saving to ourselves and our successors their episcopal rights. And so, we commend you to Almighty God, humbly praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that his blessing may rest upon you and your work. In testimony of which we have hereunto set our hand and caused our Episcopal seal to be affixed this 28th day of October in the year of our Lord 2022, in the 13th year of our consecration and of our translation, the 11th. Sam, receive this license in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, who was wounded for our sins, that you might bear in your life and ministry the love and joy and peace which are the marks of Jesus in his disciples. The Spirit of God rest on you, filling you with wisdom understanding and the fear of the Lord. The peace of Christ stand guard over your heart and mind and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Lord, preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Amen. If you are able, please stand. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The 
peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is indeed right and good, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our great High Priest. He was lifted up for us on the cross, that he might reveal your glory and draw all people to himself. You exalted him to your right hand on high, and through your Holy Spirit, you sent upon your people a rich diversity of gifts. From this royal priestly people, you raise up ministers to proclaim your word, to care for your people, and to be the stewards of your holy mysteries. You call them to serve the world your Son redeemed, and to build up his body, the Church, to be his bride. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and singing. Holy indeed, the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, 
his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of Saint Leonard, Saint Simon and Saint Jude and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, at the Saviour's command, and formed by the living Word of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in our bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Spirit and truth, pouring out the oil of love as my worship to you. In surrender I must give my every part. Lord, receive the sacrifice of a broken heart. Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend? So loving a king, Savior, what can be said? What can be sung as the praise of your name for the things you have done? Oh, my words would not tell, not even in part of the death of love that is heard by this thankful heart. You deserve my every breath, for you've paid the great cost, giving up your life to death, even death on a cross. You took all my shame away, 
that he feeds my sin. Opened up the gates of hell, and has beckoned me in. Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring? To so faithful a friend, to so loving a king. Say, what can be said? What can be sung? As the praise of your name, for the things you have done. Oh, my words could not tell, not even in heart. Of the death of now that is earned, I miss my Let us pray. O God, who has willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one cup, grant that we may be made one in Christ and joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. We come now to the notices, and you get to hear what your future is going to be like. So, Sam, over to you. Here we Thank are. You, Father. Father. I just want to say, first of all, it's wonderful to be here. Um, and thank you, Father, for your inspiring words, um, which I'm sure um, made a mark not just for me, but on all of us assembled here. Just a few short notices. Uh, first of all, there will be refreshments served in the church hall straight through after this service, so it would be lovely to see you all there, have a chat, and to share in some fellowship, as we say back home. Hope you will come through. And um, this Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the month, so it's a little bit different. Um, we shall not be worshipping either here or at St. Leonard's Church. We shall, of course, all be gathering at St. Mary's as we come together as one great big Christian family of the Horsham Team Benefits as we uh, come together to celebrate the Feast of All Saints, giving thanks for the life and witness of all the saints and think about our common journey with them towards the unclouded vision of God. And then here on Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock, uh, we shall be holding our fifth Sunday Healing Eucharist. Um, so you are all very welcome, those um, who are seeking the church's ministry of prayer uh, for healing whether in body, mind, or spirit, or if you want to um, offer prayers of healing for others in your lives. And I'll leave it at that. So it's my first time in the diocese. Um, please, would you all stand to join with me in the prayer of St. Richard of Chichester. Thanks be to thee, O Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which thou hast given us, for all the pains and insults which thou hast borne for us. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly. Amen. Blessing. Uh, I've just had a vision of St. Richard. He smiled. As he said, well, he hasn't forgotten you, so don't worry. You're, uh, I want to be thank you. Two things, two things can I ask of all of you. First, will you pray? Will you pray for an increase of vocations? That means new Christians. People who respond to the love of God and to the work of the church which witnesses to that love. That's the first thing. Second thing. Please, will you pray for an increase of vocations to the ordained ministry? 
in the 30 years from the beginning of this decade and millennium to the end, uh, from the beginning of this millennium to the end of this decade, the Church of England carelessly will have lost 70% of the serving clergy to retirement, unfortunately, because they still cost us. But the good news, the good news is many of them retire to Sussex. So we're doing that nice thing. The bad news is we do not then have, we do not then have the people of imagination and energy and uh, uh, expertise and skill uh, which are needed to come and serve you, the people of God. New priests uh, in parishes, in new areas uh, of work and mission. So please pay for an increase uh, of vocations to ordain ministry. And pray especially that young Christians will hear this call and respond with joy and openness to what it might mean for them and their future. It's an astonishing call. It's a demanding, risky, uh, extraordinary, but always rewarding and enriching call to serve the people of God for whom Jesus Christ himself laid down his life. So please pray. Increase the vocations, new Christians. Increase the vocations to serve in the church today. So let us ask that God will bless us all as we seek to continue in our pilgrimage of faith. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Eternal God, source of every gift and grace through your Son, Jesus Christ, you grant us your blessings that the church might be nourished and strengthened, bless Sam and this congregation today, and confer upon them the gifts of your Spirit. May they be filled with apostolic zeal to proclaim the gospel and remain humble in heart as they serve in your household, the Church, and bring us at the last into the peace of your kingdom with all the saints, where all honour and glory are yours, Lord our God, for ever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.